Hey buddies, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Interesting, huh? Let's see. Wait, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hey. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Hello, I'm here too. <laughs> of course. Uh, oh, there's a chat. Okay. Hello, friends. I see the group chat. Can you see the group chat? Um, like on my screen. Yeah, I see it. That I'm wiggling around because I have it on screen share. I'm not exactly sure how much it's going to show. Hey, friends. Okay. Well, so are are you excited about this new normal? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are your hands sore from washing them all the time? Yeah, they're bleeding and dry. All right, I'm gonna go get some headphones real quick. So, okay. don't say anything real important. Should we keep ourselves muted or is it like classroom thing? <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand. Should we turn on the video as well? <laughs> I don't wanna, do Wait, how does that work? Wait, wait. Whoa. We're viewing Rebecca House. I like how no one else joined. That's great. Oh, Yana has joined. Oh, yeah. Hey, Yan. Hey, buddies. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so I made a video of the magnetic field of a solenoid so that you can watch that at any time. Um, and I think that I posted, I've got like four devices in front of me, people. Um, I think that I posted example set Three? No, I didn't. Uh oh. Hey, Eric. Welcome to the party. Can y'all still hear me? Yeah. Let's see. I thought that I, whoops. What did I just do? Yes, there is an example set three, and the solutions are already posted because I didn't know, you know, how all this was going to work. But the first question is like the one we did in class the last time we had class together. Together, I think a full class together anyway it's um the solenoid not the solenoid I'm sorry the solid conductor I have solenoids on the brain because of what I was doing earlier this morning I got up this morning and I was like oh I need to do all the physics it's hard to decide what to do and when to do it So we did a question like this one that's being a little slow below. There we go. Um, oops. Can you, so I'm not exactly sure how screen sharing works. So can you see the question? We can't see anything. We just see AP Physics C. <gasps> okay, so yeah. I, I guess I'll, um, shh, let's see. It says that we're viewing your screen, though. Okay, that's cool. Thank. All right, here we go. Oh, wait, there's a sh Oh, wait, that's my share screen. Oh, yeah, we see that one. Yeah, we see now. Okay, cool. All right. Um, we did 
a question like this together. Oh, Nithi has entered the room. Should we let Nithi in? Nithic without a K. Mm -hmm. Thought that was funny. Um, hello, friends. Nithi. I rearranged my dining room to become my um, office, so now I can see all the stuff that's happening in my cul-de-sac this garbage day. Okay, we did a question like this um, the last time we were together, and there should be notes posted on that one. And we had to graph it. Hi. Did I not post it? Am I crazy? Ampere's law. We did the example on the inside. Oh yeah. And then we did the coax cable. And then Eric on was a ninja and looked up how to graph a piecewise function and we graphed the piecewise function. But Eric, I don't think you were at, so Remember we talked about like why why uh, the function didn't stop here um, when we first grafted in Desmos it kept going down 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 um, so for this example here hold on my um my scrolly thing doesn't work anymore it's really bothersome okay um. So when we did just the solid conductor like this, we put the Empyrean loop inside our solid conductor, we were able to determine the magnetic field um, due to that contribution of current that passes through that Empyrean loop ring thing. And then we determine the magnetic field outside of the cable, just being, you know, mu not i over two pi r. Um, I hate the way this breaks up. I just tell OneNote to save it as a PDF and it puts page breaks wherever it wants to. So, um, so we got a graph as we go from the center of the cable out and I put R as the um, radius of our cable. And so we get this function and it's like a one over R kind of tapering out. So, for the next question, we have a coax cable, and um, the question is, if you know to, to find oh iPhone nine has entered. Who's iPhone nine? Who do you think that is? I'll just admit them. Hopefully, they won't. Um, hi, it's learning is down. <laughs> Big surprise. Yay. I'm Miss Howell. Who is this? It's Nithic. It's who? Nithic. Nithic? Yeah. You sound, you sound, you sound so grown up. <laughs> but who is iPhone 9? Yay for physics. Okay. Can y'all still see my screen? Mm -hmm. So when we did this one in class, so this was a coax cable so there's current running to the right inside this um oops my mouse got weird uh to the right inside this coax coax means uh they share right co cooperate axial means they're sharing an axial axis and the current was running to the right here and then um in this area right there sorry i just have a boring cursor but um this area right here between R1, let's see if I can zoom in. I was having a hard time pulling up my OneNote remotely, so I'm gonna have to work on a solution for that later. Um, oops. So, and my mouse is acting dumb. So between R1 and R2, there's just an insulator, something. It could be air, it could be, you know, a plastic, something, it could be, cement it could be a ceramic it doesn't really matter what it is um but they're just not touching there so 
Then on the outside shell, so imagine like a hollow cylinder, and the current is running to the left in that portion. Now, the constraint that I made on this question was that the current density is constant. So the that means that oh max k has entered waiting room for this meeting admit hi max okay all right so um anyway the magnetic i mean the current is uniform density and so because this radius is so much bigger than the inside radius there, um, we have to think about the fact that this outer shell actually has to be thinner comparatively than the inside core cable because if the density is going to be constant, like, you know, You'd have more cross-sectional area if this were thicker up here. Um, so that was one constraint that we set up for this. And so then using Ampere's law on the inside, finding the area of the inner core um, versus the area of the outer shell. So the inside, when R was less than R1, um, up here, that was just the same as the question above where we were finding the magnetic field inside the solid conductor with a uniform current. And so that's when we got the, the magnetic field was mu naught i r over 2 pi r 1 sub 1 squared. Then um, if we're outside of this tube here we'll just get that it's um mu naught i over 2 pi r so it'll just be a decrease but then when we get inside this shell here we have current that runs to the right and current that runs to the left that we're capturing in here um, as well as so the area enclosed is not as simple anymore so if that's the area of the inner core, then the area of the shell is pi r, r little r being wherever you want to measure the um, magnetic field, the location, and then um, r sub one, r sub two, excuse me, r sub two was the inside radius of that shell. And so we went through this whole derivation where we said that the uh, current density should be equal to the enclosed current over the enclosed area. And then made our substitution for what the total current enclosed would be. And we subtracted this portion because uh, we let to the right be positive and so we'd have to subtract that portion of the um, magnetic field I mean of the current and then we stuck it into our integration the right side still winds up being pretty easy um, the closed loop integral of b dot dl is just b 2 pi r and then solve for b so then we graphed it and when we first graphed it, I made all of the um, thicknesses the same. So I made like R sub one equal to one, R sub two equal to two, and R sub three equal to three. Well, we got some negative magnetic field instead of a zero magnetic field, because you would think if the current densities were equal, then they should have um, a constant, um, or the, the total current would cancel out. Three days in, gonna go to GT for makeup, then it resets again. I don't know what that means, Max K. Sorry.
Oh, I can unmute you. Do me unmute you guys? Hello. Hey, who is that? Max. Hey, Max. What's up? What's up? Um, I like this new lecture. <laughs> I'm just sitting there listening. Okay. I, I'm new to Zoom, so we're going to figure out how it works. That's all there's to it. But yay. Okay. Minimize. All right. Um, so I went back and I was thinking about why are we getting such a negative magnetic field outside of this coaxial cable that should have a net current because there's current running to the right and then there's current running to the left so it should have a net current of zero if you do an empyrean loop outside so why were we getting this strange negative magnetic field because when we first graphed if you come down to three yes it continues on down here however it dawned on me duh that the outer shell can't be as thick as the inner core because the current density is constant and the outer hollow cylinder that cross-sectional area that was up here somewhere yeah so this area right here gets bigger faster because of the whole pi r squared um, area relationship. So anyway, it does end up being zero, but the only way it would be zero is if you had the right thicknesses of your cable and shell. So in this case, when my cable has a radius of one, then my outer shell can only have a thickness of, you know, whatever this distance would be, point to something um, meters or units or whatever comparatively. Um, like I've just mumbled about the things that we have seen already, but there it's kind of a review of what's going on with that one. So then an example set three question. This is just another question where we have current running to the left, we have current running to the right. Um, and we have equal current, and then you're to derive the expression for the magnitude of the magnetic field for all radii away from the axis of the cable. Um, and then number two here is about the a, a solenoid. So I'm going to give you some time to digest both the uh, a solution for this one and uh, a solution for number two based on, oh, Huck's here. Hey, buddy. It's his quarantine. Uh, can you go back to when you were talking about thickness? I think I got yeah. lost. For a second. Okay, so like even in this, this picture is kind of maybe a little clearer. Um, the current running, like this is the entire wire? Um, well, it, like imagine it's, it, it's gonna go, it's real long. This We're just looking at a piece of it. Um, let's see if I can do what I wanted to do. One note. Please work. Earlier today, it was like, oh, uh, work or school account. Uh, makes me nervous, like it's going to pull up the wrong one and I'll have to get mad at it. Okay, so this is a coaxial cable. Coax means um, the same or shared. Let's see if this is going to work. I'm sorry. I can't type and uh, talk at the same time. Let's see. Hold on. I paused.
All right, so hold on while we register this device. So I'm gonna hold on. Um, so a coax cable is one that, it's particularly useful because um, the magnetic field outside of it is zero because whatever current flows down the uh, core must flow out through the shell. So I'm still waiting to see if this is going to, um, let's see, zoom share. Okay. So whatever current flows to the left on the inside of this shell, and then the outside shell, and see they're not touching each other in here. Okay. And, and so because they're not touching each other, then there's no, um, they're uh, insulated from each other. They're isolated from each other. They're not affecting each other. Um, so we use a cable like this to send current. And so imagine it's super long. This is like a coax cable is like the, the round cord that might be um, the cord that you use to plug up something that uses usually a lot of current. So maybe like a vacuum cleaner um, or a uh, maybe even the like my stand mixer, the one that, you know, I mix to make baking, you know, bake with. It has a big, thick cable cord um, for to plug in. And so that means that there's a cable, okay, a part of the conductor that is like in the core, and then there's part of the conductor that is outside, like a, a sleeve almost. And so the current can run. I'm actually talking to Vivian. Here, I can see her in. Hey, yes, so you can hear her. She might say hi to you. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> oh, here. Just put it in your ear for a second. Okay. Say hi, Vivian. Hi, Vivian. Hey, Connor. <laughs> What's up? Oh, look. Yeah, there's a bunch of kids in there. We're having a virtual meeting. I'm trying to teach them a little bit, but it's a little awkward. I'll be better at it. Hi, Connor. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go play. Like, you can uh, play right now. I'm asking. If, there, if you know where the action figure section is in the basement. Your action figure section? Mm -hmm. um, it should be in the shelf that has the different colored bins. Did you look in there? Like, you, what about? I, I, oh, they're in the toy closet. Look in the toy closet, and there's a big basket that has all kinds of. Um, I want to find it. Well, will you go ask? Is it them? white? No. It's green. Will you, oh. will you ask Olivia to help you? Where is she? Uh, she's probably in the basement painting. They have free time right now so that I can help you. Hello. Three people have entered the waiting room. Oh, look at this. Wait. Eric on is joining me again and iPhone and Hawk. Okay, I'm just not used to this. This is crazy. Who's iPhone? Is iPhone, who's iPhone? Annie. It's Bye. who? It's who? I thought it was Annie, but she's an iPhone 10. So maybe not. Maybe iPhone not. iPhone nines don't exist. It's just a joke. Oh, ha ha. So somebody put their name in as dumb. I love it. Who's that? <laughs> I bet it's Eshawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we'll see who. That's funny. Okay, whatever. Um, let's wait, see. so I, I'm confused about the, like, the magnetic field in between the cables. Do they not, like, move in the same direction? Oh, wait, it's enclosed. It's like yes. Gauss's law. Just kidding. Yes. Can you, like, draw a picture of the, yes. like, the current scope? Mm -hmm. I am, oh, this doesn't look good. It says on this computer. 
I can you see? Oh, today. Oh, today. That's probably not a good one. Mac. For some reason, pause, please. Sorry, opening. Um, oh, yeah, Mythic. I didn't see you the day that I did this stuff, did I? I don't mm -hmm. think so. Okay. But I, I've been reading the notes. Ooh, you're good. Did you watch <laughs> my, my videos? Is it on the calendar? I have not seen it. This is looking promising, y'all. It's loading, loading, loading. I mean, I know it says mechanics, but hey, it's something. <gasps> yes, that's good. That's good because it has the grid in the background. So I know that it is the right thing. I also got my puppy. Oh my god. Okay. Loading, loading. All right. So let's see. Mechanics. More notebooks. Choose one to open. What? What? Just saying, this is so cool. I just like, <laughs> you're doing this. This is actually cool. I was all stop using it morning because it doesn't work. Well, everybody got up this morning and logged in. So yeah. and think about like I keep thinking we probably have are gonna break the internet today. I was expecting doo doo, y'all. This is not good. That's not, this is not what I want. This is not, I do not want you. This was not the right one. Nickname, clothes notebook. All right. Um, I'm still trying to get this to work. Open, home, home, insert, draw, what? notebooks on this computer. Let's not say July. It's not good. In 2016. I've looked at the Mac Emac. I've looked at that one. Rebecca had school today. No, no. January 20. Did I open that one yet? It was last used by me, January 20. That's not a good sign. Um, all right, please stop. This is not looking good either. This is not what I want. Nickname it. Name it. Old. I don't know. I keep trying to change the names of these things and it just doesn't work out well. Okay. We'll just play here and I'll sync everything up at some point. I don't want you. Got my um, bamboo board going again. It's very exciting. Whoops. Nope. What just happened? Nope. Look at all the drawing tools. This is the, the newer version. I 
think. All right, let's see. Oh, remember how I used to be able to draw so pretty? All right, so you've got a conductor and it's really long and it has a current that's running like um, to the right. I. And move in the same direction okay um okay so if i have a current to the right there and i were to um ooh, this is a rainbow pen i can make that my new empyrean loop yes that's great all right and then this is whoa that didn't that was not good and um we have that this is r some distance from the axis and maybe this guy has a radius of capital R. And so if you want to find the magnetic field due to just, I mean, imagine that you are now enclosing just this section of this thick cable. So it's, you know, all of this. This is my favorite new thing to write with. It's so cute. Makes me so happy. All right, so we're looking for the magnetic field here, and just like we would for any other um, current carrying wire, we're going to use um, the right hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field. So you stick your thumb in the direction of the, the current, and so your thumb goes this way. This is your, your thumb. And then uh, your fingers would wrap so that you'd have like a magnetic field. Um, oh, these are fun. Um, add a pin, add a pin. Oh, these are just so much fun and I can't even stand it. Is the current going throughout the entire cylinder or just like the center? The current is everywhere. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just looking at uh, like a piece of it. And so at the very top here, your magnetic field would be um, kind of directed out of the page towards you. And then it would be down the page tangent to my, my rainbow circle there. And then into the page behind here. And then back here, it's like up the page. So that would be your magnetic field. And um, so then if, if I want to determine, oops, is interesting. Oh, look, I can write like the, I can choose to write in like star stuff. Oh my gosh. Mu not I enclosed is equal to, look at me. Ooh, I got eight people in here. Is everybody in? Is anybody in the waiting room? I'm hosting. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay. Um, times the magnetic field, or the closed surface integral of the magnetic field times, or dotted with, DL. And so um, up here, we had all these magnetic field lines, so our B right there, if I were to um, imagine, let's see. So we had our, our loop and we've got some magnetic field this way a little bit a little db if you will and it's parallel to a little dl of this you know circle that's distance r um we like to call these an empyrean loop And so everywhere along here, there's a little bit of DL and it has a direction and coupled with a little bit of magnetic field, little DB. And so I can determine the total strength of the magnetic field um, around this loop um, or at this distance 
if I add up all the little bits of magnetic field all the way around. And so that's why we, we call this Ampere's Law. So when we're inside this, um, so when little r is less than capital R and you're inside the conductor. Not all of the current is enclosed in this um, Amperian loop. And so just like we did before with other, um, with like the, I lost my words. Um, Gauss's law, yep, that's what I was trying to say. Um, the total current over the cross-sectional area of our conductor would be equal to the current enclosed by our Amperian loop over the area that we're enclosing with our Amperian loop. And so um, that means that our I enclosed would be equal to the total current times the um, area of the enclosed section over the total area. So this is like the total area. And so then the area enclosed, so you have I and that will be pi little r squared over pi capital R squared. That's why we love pi day. Um, anyway, so then this gives us that our I enclosed would be I R squared over capital R squared. And then that is going to be our substitution into our um, I enclosed. So then, um, it's going to get weird. Getting used to this. Okay. So in order to determine the magnetic field that is captured or inside that tube, um, this kind of thing works for everything we have studied really in nature. We've studied uh, charged particles and, um, oops, did not mean to do that, friends. Hold on. Um, stop. Expand. Okay, I got two more in the chat. Sorry, maybe I'll have to leave here. All right, so this is hard. <laughs> Y'all are killing me. All right, hold on. I need, it says quarantine. I don't understand this. Three days in, gonna go to GT for makeup, then it resets again, another 27. Max K, why are you quarantined? Did you go somewhere bad? What's happening? All right. TSA. Oh. Was there someone there? Are you just saying this is for yourself? You're self-quarantining for yourself? For your, I don't know if you can see me or not. Self, okay, gotcha. All right, I'll just leave this chat up on the right side there because y'all are posting stuff and I'm not seeing because I'm done. <laughs> Privately. Okay, friends, I'm sharing. It's safe to go outside to everyone. Thanks, iPhone 9. I wish I knew who you were. All right, um, yes, GT is closed, kind of. Okay, so anyway, let's finish this up. I got about six minutes. So then this I enclosed would be um, I R squared, the R that we're looking for over capital R squared is equal to, and now this side of the equation, because the magnetic field, all the little bits of magnetic field are parallel to DL, 
then it'll just be BDL. So let's see. Um, so P equals I over four thirds pi R. Okay, so rho, I guess that's rho. Nithic posted that up there. That is if it were a volume. So current is a, um, we could talk about current density as not being the current per volume, but the current um, per area. So like it's a flow. Remember like when we've done anything with flux, it was like there's an area component to it. So that's why, um, let me scroll back down. Um, that's why it is this just pi r squared is the cross-sectional area. I can make a note of that. There we go. All right. So then, um, whoa, it's not what I expected. I'm trying to do like a split screen here where I can still see what you homies are talking about. So you're not talking about me. I'm just kidding. I don't want to add a pen. Let's zoom out. Oh, 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 what are you doing? Connor, I can't hear. Hi. No, well, Connor took over. Connor, go. I think th these kids are going to stop wanting to do physics with me. I only have eight people. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what's going on? Please stop. Hmm? It's not time for a device. Okay, good. All right, so anyway, ugh, this is taking forever. But I'll get better at it, I promise. We have more days to practice. Okay, so then um, DL, we actually, I need an integration sign there because the DL is still a thing to integrate. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disappear that. So we're going to um, integrate DL from... Well, what is DL? It's a little uh, tangent piece of the circle. And so DL is actually um, R, the radius of our little loop. Then it's um, D theta, because we're gonna, you know, imagine you're looking at a little piece of DL right here, and you got a little D theta there, and that's R up there. And so when you integrate, I can hear you, I can hear you buddy. It's snack time. It's, it's snack time. It's always snack time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so we're going to... What is it going to be the device time? In just a minute. We're going to go from 0 to 2 pi all the way around. And so that will give us 2 pi r. And that is where our circle thing comes in and kind of makes sense in terms of just... Uh, the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire in the first place. So, um, I'll stop. Um, so then, if we substitute that, oops, sorry, we'll have mu naught i. Little R. Oh gosh, it's bad. It doesn't like that I'm using the bamboo board and R squared over capital R. 
squared, and this will be equal to b times the 2 pi r. And most often, this right side of this integration is going to be um, b 2 pi r, a lot like how when we integrated um, our surface for a for a Gauss's law problem, um, and then we're going to solve for the magnetic field. So then B will be equal to mu naught i r over two pi capital R squared. And so that's inside. Mommy, this is not working. Can you fix it? Where's, where's the other one? Oh, this one off. Okay. It's starting works now. Okay, so I guess y'all are all that ain't normal. What's wrong? Are you trying to get this to work? Okay, that one. Alright. Can you even get this one out? Woo! There it worked. I just had to push the button down. Where's the other side of your tie fighter? Don't squish me. So y'all are all going to ditch me now and go on to this learning? That's super. Maybe everybody quit and is having lunch. Um, okay, so give me some feedback on this meeting help. Yes, there is one for Mac. It'll be um, in the afternoon from one to two. Wait, is the coax cable like different from what we just did? The coax cable is like two different currents going around? Yes, and they're in opposite directions. Okay, so then you would subtract them? When you're yeah. trying to do, do the, the yes. Whole okay. Yeah. So oh. you're looking for the current enclosed by the. Um, let's see. I think I can get back over here. So if then this is a coax cable situation. Yes, you can hold Millie. I'm going to use a different color because I can. It's fun. All right, so then this. Oh, you weren't at school and it took me forever to draw this. Everybody was like, stop drawing. They were sick of me. It's funny. Wait, I don't think I see you drawing. Oh, oh, oh. You know what? I stopped sharing my screen because I was all over the place. Resume. <laughs> sorry, sorry, buddies. Okay, can you see my terrible? Yeah, I can. Okay. Oops. Control E. Put that back in there. So, oops. Um, all right. So, if if you would imagine that. Okay. So this this area right here that I'm shading yellow would be a an insulator. So we filled it with some sort of plastic. And then you've got um, a cross-sectional area of the outside part here. Ooh, that got a little excited there. So this is like the area for the outside part. And hey, Millie. And then the inside part, let's see. Um, she had my sock. Why she had my sock? Because she got it and she was playing with it. Okay. 
It's kind of funny. All right. Yes. Okay. So then this is like R1. This is R2. And this is R3. And so in the purpley shaded area, there's a current that's like to the right. So there's a I to the right, but in the blue shaded kind of area there, pale blue. So out here and all the way around, because if I keep, you know, I could keep drawing this shell all the way around, if I add up all this current here, it gives me a total current equal to what was in there. Going to the right is now going to the left. So if you were to create your Empyrean loop to go all, let me try that again, all the way around your conductor, So this is your Amperian loop. Then the I enclose, sorry. I like to use a little I. The I enclosed would be equal to zero because these two currents are in the opposite direction. You have a, their opposed site direction. And then if you use your right hand rule, put your thumb in the direction of the current here, then um, you've got magnetic field in the yellow insulator area, if you will, that's um, going into the page below and out of the page above because I put my thumb in the direction of the current. And then if I were to do my right hand rule for the outer shell and put my thumb to the left, then I'm going to have, um, I'll use purple or indigo, magnetic field lines going into the page above and out of the page down here. And so if we use the principle of superposition, meaning adding things up on top of each other, then ooh, let's use a fun color. Then these and these magnetic field lines, because remember these X's extend from here to infinity, but when they um, get in the vicinity of this opposite directed magnetic field, these two wind up canceling each other out. And we can get, um, that's not canal, but cancel. Uh, they cancel each other out and then we can um, assume the magnetic field outside is zero or it could be zero if the two currents are the same. So if your Empyrean loop though, instead is, so this is the outer shell conductor. So if you put your loop in here, yeah. So if I put my Empyrean loop there, then the current enclosed, come on, scroll. Right here. Yes would be the current that's to the right. So I'm gonna make that positive just cause whatever. And then minus the current enclosed by this Empyrean loop here. So this is a, this is also an Empyrean loop. And so that would be some fraction of the total current. And so then that's when I said, well, um, 
if your current density, which is current over area, is constant, then the I enclosed by that outside area, or that in this piece right here, would have an area of pi little r squared, because we're going to go out to the Imperial loop, minus pi r sub 2 squared. And then this, i over a, well, this area I could use as pi times r sub 1 squared, because I do know that this current right here, And so that's how I can get this relationship between the, so then this is, this is like the I inside. This would be like I outer. I think I haven't spelled outer. I kind of don't care. So then I enclosed would be equal to the total current times pi r squared minus, I don't know why I did that, pi r sub 2 squared. I pulled out my old bamboo board to, to use during this, this time of social distancing. And so this is the outer enclosed, uh, enclosed, and so inside, we're enclosing the whole thing. Then we want to subtract this piece. So then it'll be i times, I can divide by pi bottom and top. So it'll be r squared minus r sub 2 squared over r sub 1 squared. So. I enclosed in the J equation, your density equation, is that the enclosed just in the blue part? Yes. So it's different from the one that's, um, that you use like for the Empyrean loop enclosed? That I did earlier, yes. So I'm trying just to figure out well, how much current have I enclosed total? Uh-huh. And so, I've enclosed, it'll be the like you enclose some in the blue and then you enclose some in the pink. Yes. You're subtracting them from each other because they're going in opposite directions. Yes. So the amount in the pink over the area of the pink is the same ratio of the amount in the blue over the area of the blue that you've enclosed? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. Because the idea was that it was going to be uniform. That's why in order for this to have a zero magnetic field outside, the thickness of the outer shell, that's, uh, the whole graph thing, it has to be much thinner ratio-wise than the inner core cross-sectional area. So this inner core cross-sectional area here is you know, whatever it is, but then this area right here has to be equal. And so the inside R and the outside R will be closer to be equal to each other. Um, it'll be thinner. But to, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. I think you get it. it and stretching it out. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's good. All right, I gotta go deal with my children. So thanks, thanks for uh, joining me. I still have Bye. seven people left, I guess. Thank you, Miss Howell. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good. Bye -bye. I'm eating. All right. Oh, <sighs> so anybody want to get lunch though? Like, <laughs> they have a drive-through at Chick Fil A only. Yeah. Really? That's <laughs> good. They close the lines are long, you know, especially at the collection. I know.
people who are still going to swim practice. Well, there's, oh, enough, I, there's enough chlorine in the swim practice to kill anything. I still, I still had a golf tournament yesterday, so. You did? That's crazy. Um, we took Millie to the vet, but, I mean, it's not like we, we were around people, but we still weren't touching them. We're trying to keep six feet apart. <laughs> and so then the are going through on the supply of flow, right? That's very important. What? Who is it? <laughs> uh, that's my dad, my dad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hey dad. All right. Well, I'm gonna end this because I have to go and take care of my children. So thanks for playing. Um maybe this will get better and I will get better at using my technology. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Goodbye. See you later. Uh, see you.